Have you ever like been scrolling online, you know, maybe feeling a little burnt out and then bam, you get hit with an ad. Uh -huh. And it's like one of those ones that feels like it was made just for you. Like, you know, the ones promising to teach you the secret, right? like earning tons of money every week, working from anywhere. Yeah. It's like they figured out exactly what you want in that moment. Exactly. It's like they've peeked into your soul and they're like, this is how to fix your life. It's incredibly common to feel that way, actually. These get-rich-quick schemes, they're designed to tap into those desires. Mm -hmm. Especially when we're talking about something like money, which is so emotionally charged for most people. Totally. So, like, what is it about those promises that's so appealing? Why do we want to believe there's this, like, easy path to success? Well, our brains crave shortcuts. Yeah. Right? They want the easiest route to a reward, and in this case, the reward is financial freedom. Psychologists call this tendency a cognitive bias. Cognitive bias. Can you like break that down a bit more? Sure. Think of it this way. Our brains get hit with so much information all the time. To handle it, they create these like mental shortcuts. Okay. It helps us make decisions faster. But sometimes those shortcuts, those biases can lead to mistakes in thinking. So these get rich quick schemes our brains zero in on the promise of easy money, the risks. We got to push those aside and those potential rewards. They suddenly seem way more likely than they actually are. So it's not just me being a little too optimistic. No, not at all. It's how our brains are wired. Like think about the lottery. We know deep down that winning is incredibly unlikely. Right. But that dream of instant riches, it's just so powerful that our brains sometimes downplay the reality. Yeah. Okay, so this isn't a new thing though, right? These schemes have been around forever. It's not like it's just an internet thing. Exactly. The internet has definitely supercharged things, but the underlying tactics, they're the same. I mean, think about those old timey snake oil salesmen. Oh yeah. So were they like actually selling snake oil or was it all fake? A lot of times it was totally fake. One example that always comes to mind is this guy, Clark Stanley from the late 1800s. He made a killing selling snake oil as a miracle cure for pretty much everything. Wow, and people believed him. People were desperate for cures back then, and he offered a solution, a quick fix. Anyway, fast forward to 1916, they finally analyzed his magical snake oil. That was in it. It was basically just mineral oil and turpentine, not a drop of snake oil to be found, a complete scam. But see, even back then, these schemes, they worked by taking advantage of people's vulnerabilities. Stanley gave people hope. It didn't matter if it was real or not. Wow. And that's what's really important to remember. The tactics haven't changed that much. It's just the methods have gone from like covered wagons and medicine shows to slick websites and social media. Wild. So the internet, though, it's like a super highway for these schemes now, right? Definitely. I mean, think about it. It's not just that they can reach way more people online, which they can. Yeah. But they can target their message so precisely. Like they use data and algorithms and all that to put their like promises right in front of the people who are you know most likely to go for it okay that makes sense but what about the actual tactics like when we see those ads with the you know like lamborghinis and the private jets yeah. and they're all about that laptop lifestyle right right but it goes deeper than just the uh the flashy images they're playing on our psychology one of the big ones is this idea of urgency like you got to act now or you'll miss out oh yeah the limited time offers and all that i have to admit that stuff gets to me sure we've all been there and that feeling, it's FOMO, fear of missing out. It totally bypasses your rational mind. Makes sense. What about those testimonials? They always sound so real. Well, that's the thing about the internet. It's so easy to manufacture that kind of social proof. Oh, you're saying they're fake. Not always, hmm? but they can be, you know, carefully selected, hmm? edited, sometimes even totally made up. The thing is, we're wired to trust other people, especially if we think they're like us. Mm -hmm. So testimonials, they work even if they're not legit. It's like they're playing us without us even knowing it. And what's up with all the personal stories? Like every guru was broke and miserable until they found this one weird trick. Yeah, the rags to riches story. Uh, Another classic tactic. Why does that work so well? Because it makes them relatable. Right. Like they've been in your shoes, they get it. Uh -huh. And we're drawn to people who've overcome obstacles. Uh -huh. It's inspiring. Right. The problem is they use that to make their promises seem more realistic than they actually are. It's all starting to make sense now. Okay, yeah. but what about MLMs? Those are a little different, right? Yeah, MLMs or multi-level marketing companies, they're a whole other beast. Yeah. And yeah, they can be pretty sneaky because they often try to pass themselves off as like legitimate business opportunities. Right, right. I was reading that case study you sent about Vema 
the energy drink company. Oh, right. Yeah. It's just sad. All those college students thinking they'd get rich, but then... The Vema case is a perfect example of how these things can go bad. I mean, they were basically shut down for being a pyramid scheme. It's just not right. And it's more common than you'd think. A lot of MLMs, they care more about recruiting new people than they do about selling actual products. Which is messed up because the people at the bottom, they end up losing money. Exactly. It's the people at the top who make all the money. Always. So why are young people, especially college students, so vulnerable to this stuff? Well, college is tough, right? Like you're trying to figure out who you are, what you want to do. Yeah. And on top of that, you've got financial pressure, classes, all that. MLMs, they zero in on that. It's like they're promising the impossible dream. Exactly. Financial freedom, flexible hours. It all sounds amazing when you're in that headspace. And then you get sucked in before you even realize what's happening. It's not just the money, though, is it? It's like they create this whole community. Yeah, the social aspect is huge. They're really good at building this culture of like positivity and support. Right. Like everyone's on the same team. Exactly. Events, online forums, all that. It creates a sense of belonging. Mm. Which, again, can be super appealing when you're young and maybe feeling a little lost. It's scary how effective it is. So, like, how do we protect ourselves? We've talked about all the problems, but what are the solutions? Honestly, knowledge is the best defense. Yeah. The more you understand these tactics, the easier they are to spot. So be skeptical. Like, question everything. Absolutely. Don't be afraid to ask the tough questions. Who's behind this? What are their qualifications? Do their claims actually hold up? And, like, look for independent information. Don't just take their word for it. Exactly. Do your own research. Read reviews from people who aren't part of the scheme. So those countdown timers, those limited time offers, those are all red flags. Huge red flags. Pure pressure tactics. They don't want you to think rationally. They just want you to act. Wow. This has been eye-opening. We've covered so much ground. The psychology, the tactics. It's a lot. It really is. Yeah. But the big takeaway here is critical thinking. Don't let your emotions make financial decisions for you. Easier said than done sometimes. But seriously, this has been great. Glad to be here. So as we wrap up this deep dive, what's like the one thing you want our listeners to remember? When you learn how to spot these schemes, you're not just protecting your wallet, you know. You're becoming a more critical thinker in general. And that's a skill that will serve you in all areas of life. So true. Always be questioning, always be learning. And until next time, everyone, happy learning.